Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Faros' playthrough of Dark Souls 2. We've got this little pit ahead of us that's going to be giving us quite a bit of trouble, but I have the Silver Cat Ring, so I can make it down there. I did take the time to strip all my armor and weapons off, because fall damage is actually exacerbated by having larger weight percentages. It's a lot similar to how stamina works, in that higher weight equals more damage, while higher weight equals lower stat stamina recovery. But it's not going to be too big of a deal, especially because you can immediately swap back to your regular setup. Just trying to call to mind exactly what I had going on for myself. I did spend some time off screen farming a little bit because I really wanted just a good bow and I finally managed to get the Varangian shield but sadly I basically farmed out both the Varangians and the abominations down at the bottom of Sinner's Rise and absolutely nobody was willing to give me a decent bow so I'm probably just gonna have to use the short bow until such a time as I can swap that out it is nice because it has a lot better stamina usage and it fires a bit quicker than the other bows but it doesn't have the punch or the range that I'm looking for in an actual weapon so it's basically going to be relegated to either sniping certain enemies that I just really don't want to deal with in melee or being used to proc poison arrows with really good consistency since other than that, it's not going to have the punch to be considered a real weapon. Come on through here. I am not going to actually engage in this covenant just yet, even when I do clear through here, because I want to join the rat covenant over in the doors of Pharos. That way I can still take the time to clear through the actual Doors of Pharos level and possibly get some of the drops that all the Gurm are going to give me because the Gurm have amazing drops just up down and sideways just such good armor and lots of chances for chunks large titanite all sorts of good stuff so I am going to actually want to kill some of them before I enter the Covenant otherwise they just kind of ignore me as I traipsed on through and while it makes it a little bit easier, it's certainly nowhere near as fun or rewarding. Tag this. I don't actually have any Ferris Lockstones right now, so... Oh, wait, I have two. Okay, so ignore me, but, uh... After I start doing a little bit more PvP, I'll be able to customize my dungeons a little bit more. There we are. It's nice to see that I can kill them in one hit, so long as I get the proper sweet spot. Aside from that, this boss fight is just a matter of kiting and not getting swarmed and backing off to heal. Advice that I might want to take to heart. <laughs> mm. They do have good stagger capacity. There we go. Nice triple kill. I've never taken the time to actually count out exactly how many rats have to die in order for the uh, true boss to show up, but rarely have I ever needed to... Okay, there we go. What's really great is that he always spawns in the same position, so once you see his health bar, you know to come right on over here, and he will be waiting for you. As you can see, he staggers incredibly easily and takes tons of damage. I'm gonna back off to heal so I can head once again into the fray and as long as you're paying attention you can clearly see his little mane that marks him as different from the rest of the horde. It's a little bit fun to just kill any of these stragglers. Show them the what for. Because they do have chances at drops I think. I, I don't actually recall. But it's unimportant. I've got all the important stuff from here, and now I'm going to be heading on to the gutter itself, because, you know, sadism. I really do hate the gutter, and it, it's a, it's a well-designed area. It's a really nice level. It's just so annoying. 
to actually have to play. So it's really annoying and depressing, but oh well. One thing that it does really nicely is set up the connection between the poison and the little statues that actually spit it out, which is a really, really important part of the... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I don't know how I didn't pull off the plunging attack, but didn't give it to me. But the poison statues are actually one of the biggest parts of the lore behind Pharos. So, it's definitely something you need to pay attention to if you're going to be looking into it at all. I'm just going to Homeward Bone back out so I get another chance at that lizard and can get the uh, Ash Knuckle Ring, I believe, because it's actually extremely useful for heading on to the gang, the um, multiple phantom boss fight in Shulva, since you've got all those petrification uh, statues and little lizard buddies. So, it's, it is something that I'm going to need before I head on. As with the uh, old Iron King DLC kind of messing with the lore a bit, the Shulva uh, Sunken King DLC also messes with Pharos' lore a bit in that it shows that the statues are not something completely unique to areas where Pharos is either king or greatly respected leader or just all sorts of wonderful little epithets but at the same time uh, it could be postulated that uh, since Faros was a vagabond, a wanderer he traveled across the land that he actually learned of the little poison spitting contraptions in uh, Shulva itself Shulva does seem to be an ancient and dead city, though that doesn't really fit with what we know of it. It's almost guaranteed to be just about the same age as Drang Lake, since not only can the Drang Lake emblem be found amongst the possessions of Yorg, but also, um, what should we call it? Ah, uh, goodness. I remember there being another explanation for why it's the same. Oh yes, the the relief down at the bottom of the Dragon Sanctum, right before you actually face Sin, that relief doesn't depict Sin as some would have you believe. It's a depiction of the Dragon Eyrie, likely the ancient dragon. It's uh, actually showing... It's the same statue that can be found above the little passageway to the petrified dragon egg over in the dragon shrine and you can tell that because if you actually look at the relief not only are there multiple dragons pretty much guaranteeing you that it's not sin since there's there's only one of him but there's also the same platforms that are so iconic of the uh, dragon Irie and there's the petrified dragon egg, which some people have, I, I don't know why, but idly speculated that the dragon, the petrified dragon egg may have come from Sin, which is a little bit silly considering the dragon Irie is chock full of dragon eggs, just none of them are petrified. So I, I don't really know where people are coming from with that, but it's something that has been speculated, so I thought I'd bring it up. And... The other big thing is that it's, uh, again, it, it just has all the iconography of the Dragon Irie and Dragon Shrine. It has no actual connection to Shulva, aside from arguably all the little monk-like figures found at the bottom. But at the same time, we know that Aldia had a lot of helpers and a lot of robed figures helping him with his rituals and likely with his creation of the dragons so that's very easily explained it just seems that all of the lore there is completely uh, outside of its where, where it's supposed to be I think that it's just a reuse of assets but at the same time you could also argue that it's ugh, the hitbox on that guy 
He's just absolutely terrible. You get hit before his paw starts moving. But I would actually argue that it's pretty good proof that the, whatchamacallit, Shulvan infatuation with the dragon came about the same time as the Drang Lake experimentation with dragons. Some uh, One other like really interesting idea that you could sort of expound upon is that the um, little relief that actually protects Sin, that shields him away, that relief could have been built as a barricade against possible usurpers who would want to kill Sin, looking at you, Yorg. But uh, there, there's not really a whole lot to go on, so we can't say for certain one way or another. It's just a very loose little bit of lore that has a lot of capabilities for to be speculated upon, but at the same time, not a lot of ability to have us come to a, an actual conclusion one way or the, another. It's just very up in the air, very little to really know, other than the relief down in the Dragon Sanctum is a direct copy of the one that's found in the Dragon Shrine. And it's a depiction of the Dragon Irie, not Sin, or any of his, uh, any of the civilization that surrounded Sin. Ah, oh, goodness. I want to take these out. I am going to come down here. There's a bunch of great loot on this side path. And specifically, there's the Bandit Great Axe and that Titanite Chunk, which are going to be pretty key facets of this playthrough, at least in the early game. By the time I reach mid-game, I am going to want to completely replace the Bandit Great Axe with the Lion Great Axe because it does have more quality scaling, but at the same time the Lion Great Axe cannot be acquired until you're midway through the Shaded Woods, and that's going to be some time, because I'm going through the gutter first, I've already cleared through the uh, Lost Sinner, so honestly, if I'm going to be taking a kind of regular route, then the, whatchamacallit, Shaded Wood is going to be the last of the four main locations that I'm going to be headed to before I head to Dranglight Castle. It's going to be the last one of the four Great Old Souls that I haven't tackled since Freya's really just kind of left for last. I almost always want to head to the Old Iron Keep in order to grab the key for, not the key, but the Dull Ember for Lenagrast and have him as a smithing option as well as unlock infusions so oh and of course the unlimited large titanite not to mention all the chunks and um, there we go bandit great axe chunks and there's one other thing yes the fragrant branches of yore that can be found in huntsman's cops not the huntsman's cops but harvest valley on the lead up to the old iron keep so it really just is the next logical step I would say that the real set order of things is force of the fallen giants first that's just what you basically have to do um, a little bit in the best deal and at that point you can introduce the um, gutter here at any point since it's really about the navigation and your torch rather than the actual combat. Does that stagger? No, that does not stagger. So I need to bait him into that bite attack once more and then I can pull this off properly. Oh, come on. Maybe I can just ignore him. Yes, I can just ignore him. As I was saying, the gutter can really be done anytime, whereas uh, the the best order for the rest of the four great old souls, I guess, is um, Lost Sinner into... Oh, look at... Uh, back it up. Lost Sinner into the Old Iron King into finishing with Freya. Did, th did that at least do damage? Thank you. Stop. Stop with that attack. You're broken. Just stop it. 
some aromatic ooze to replace some of the stuff I've been using. It's good to see. Definitely going to be bring that into play for the rotten since I'm only going to have a plus seven weapon by the time I fight him. Usually I have a plus ten, considering my regular clearing schedule, but that's just not in the cards for this playthrough. I'm heading there basically as fast as I can, just lickety split right on over to the boss, and then I'm going to be heading through with the rest of my regular clear. Come on over here. I forget what this is. Maybe a ring of soul protection? It is. I think I failed to light the uh, torch down there, but I'm not going back for it. It can just sit there. I am really hoping for Melinda's great axe. Since I actually would prefer the great axe to a bandit great axe, but that's going to be up to her. The drop rate on it is fairly low. Oh, There we go. And right now, I'm dealing with all of her buddies. Stop. Melinda, please. There's only that guy left and her. Let's get the... Oh, dear. No, there's more. The delay on some of her swings is actually very hard to account for. See what I mean? I am going to just stop with the fire. I don't need the fire. I need to be focusing. And I'm actually going to get a parry off. Nope. I'm going to try for the parry and immediately get shut down. Quite honestly, I probably deserved it, but I've almost cleared the entire gutter. It's just this one last side path before I can head on through to the very end. And there's actually a really quick run back that leads you right there. So... It's not going to be too much of a hassle. I did actually take some time and upgrade my decks by six with all the spare souls that I got from clearing the uh, abominations down at the bottom of Sinner's Rise, as well as... The oh, goodness. No, 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 no. You're kidding me. Fine, I'll, I can wait. I can wait. It's better than dealing with that dog just at all. There we go. I'm safe. Like this, just because it's here. Why not? And from here, I can actually jump right on down. But I don't think that actually triggers Melinda. So maybe I should take the time to head on down and light the torch at the bottom. Because I have to come back up from that direction in order to trigger Melinda properly. That also allows me to take out all of these silly enemies before Melinda's involved. Giving me a little bit time to kind of clear everything out of the, my way and make it safe for when I'm actually having to deal with a dark spirit. There we go. Of course want to make sure all the poison statues are bashed as well. Yeah, this is the one I was looking for. Tag that. Oh, I don't think I grabbed the uh, loot in the middle chest here. I'm actually kind of glad I came back for it. Yeah, no, that chest is unopened. I almost forgot about it. That would have been sad. It's a twinkling titanite and something else. Small, smooth, and silky stones. It's a nice drop. It gives you a chance at some fun, random loot, so I'll take it. A lot of ladders in here. Again, it's very reminiscent of all the other places. Is, does she not invade again? She might not, and that makes me sad. Because, again, I was really hoping to get her great axe, but it probably wasn't going to happen anyways, so it's no real loss. It's just kind of sad that I died to a phantom. I don't like it when that happens. I'm usually a little bit better than that, but now we can finish off the level. Light the torch. I am going to rest at the bonfire just to get that Estus back and reset everything for my final run. But this one's going to be right on through. Looks like there's an item up there. Oh, I know what that is. It's just a silly little flame butterfly. Really annoying bit of loot. It's in a pot up there by the um, actual zipline. 
and I almost never bother with it just because it is so worthless. I do have a poison moss, so let's get rid of that. Come on through, make sure that I'm safe while I'm lighting my torch. Tag this. That pot right there holds the flame butterfly, and it's really just a bit of trash loot. I think it's basically there to bait you into heading the other way. Oh my god, no. This is this is terrible. The dogs are just being absolutely horrible to me this evening. There we go. Hopefully that drags it off the edge. No such luck. But that at least takes him out of my way for long enough to tag all of these. Coming over here and tag these two as well. Just because there's basically no way back up once you've headed down. And I want to grab the Wicked Eye Great Shield even though I'm probably not going to use it anytime soon. It might be an interesting little add to the character, but I don't really think it fits with what I'm going for so far. I do want to keep with the lightly armored, light shield, great weapon type look, so this little, this big old slab of a shield doesn't really fit any of that too well. It is cool, and it's got that health gain effect, but aside from that, it's actually fairly lackluster. Come on down. Oh, and the dog's here as well. Luckily, he's not paying attention, so I can completely ignore him. Oh, goodness. Usually I'd have a bunch of hexing urns from Harvest Valley for this, but it would seem I'm just going to have to use regular old fire bombs to clear those. You want to make sure that your landing is going to be safe. Otherwise, they have a chance of staggering you midair and dropping you down into the abyss below, which is not pleasant, let me tell you. Usually it ends up in death. In fact, 100% of the time. Tag this bonfire. Not going to rest because I've only used a single Estus and my weapon durability isn't low at all, so I can just keep on going. There's only one pot with anything here in this main room, but you can still come on through this fog gate backwards, I guess. It's honestly designed to be accessed from the other direction, but get some poison arrows. Come on over here and grab all the poison moss. There we go. I'll take the weapon durability. Just let me get my loot. Grab that. Grab that. Oh, and two of them drop poison. Oh. You just will not let up, will you? Can I dodge through the legs? I can. Good. Now we're basically done. It's just those few little drops on my way down, and we're, we're golden. <sighs> There's going to be no more poison until I get to Black Gulch, so don't even have to worry. Oh. Didn't manage the jump, but I've still got the silver cat ring on, so it didn't matter. I wonder if I could have staggered them with my strong attacks if I'd had my stone ring equipped. It's too late now, but it's something to remember for next time. These guys all have those dark weapons that look like they shouldn't do anything, but actually are incredibly powerful. I don't really know why. I You could maybe try and say that they're infected with the abyss or have some sort of actual dark infusion but for my money they're just silly and deal ridiculous amounts of damage for being such weak enemies so that's that there we go light this last little torch and that's all of them for the gutter grab my fragrant branch of yore I actually have two of those now, so I could clear all the way to the Lion Knights, which, you know, might actually be a good idea. Clear all the way through to the Lion Knights, get the Lion Great Axe rather than dealing with the Bandit Great Axe. That's something I could do. I'm going to head back to Majula, spend these souls, upgrade my equipment, and debate with myself a little about whether or not I actually want to spend any 
any soles and upgrade materials on this bandit great axe because honestly it's probably not going to stick around for too long just see what it ah uh, it's so short range too hmm I do like that swing attack but hmm space damage is really nice Gah. well I'm not gonna use it just yet so I'll leave it aside for now but you know I can at least get it no no it's it's not a quality weapon I'd much rather use a quality great axe so no I'm not gonna bother with that I've got my quality great sword for clearing through I don't have any other great weapons just yet other than the great sword but it doesn't really fit the bill and the Dreng Lake Sword, which is basically just another quality great sword. But I, I want to save my Twinkling Titanite for something special. Don't know what just yet, but there's bound to be something really worth my while. I'm looking at the time now, and I believe that if I'm fast, I can actually head all the way through to the Rotten and still be under time. I know I was a little bit over last episode, but to be fair, I was taking a lot longer than was expected since the enemies there were doing much better against me than I really expected them to. Let's go with the lighter one. I don't know what its range is in comparison, but I think the winged spear will do me just fine. As you all know, the spear is just my personal choice of weapon for clearing out these poison statues. If I'm feeling particularly ballsy, I'll actually not break them at all and just kind of try and dash through rolling at the proper locations, but nah. Oh gosh. I hate it when there's multiple staggers on that. I'm actually just going to sit in the poison and use an Estus once I get low because I want that little bit of immunity because you can't be to poisoned twice. That would just be silly. Oh, I didn't want to aggro two of these guys. That's not actually good. He has a drop. That's, that is good. Get out of there. Swing, swing. Bingo. Mm, that wasn't going to work. <laughs> Don't know what I was trying that for. Large Titanite Shard. That's good. How many of those do I have? Enough to really do nothing important with. It'll get my... Lion Great Axe to plus 5 if I can get one, but I'm not quite there yet, so, meh. Once I have, I, I've kind of decided it. I'm going to try and get my Lion Great Axe and then stop that route and head right on over to the Old Iron Keep rather than switching it up in the sort of middle area after I grab the Dull Ember, I'm actually going to switch it up the other way around and head through the Shaded Wood first and grab the Ember second. Drop on down. I believe that I've still been talking to What's-Her-Face in all of her locations, so she should have something nice for me, and after this she'll have nothing nice for me. Thank you very much. I've honestly never done her quest line after the first time I successfully did it, and at this point I, I don't really feel any need to on basically any of my characters, since it really is just to get her armor and stuff, and you can just buy that after killing her. I'd much rather play out all the boss fights without phantoms and just have to buy her armor after killing her than kind of solely the fight with a summon. In case you can't tell, I'm very, very anti-summon. I, I don't like to uh, reduce the difficulty for myself. I want to have the full experience. And so, while I, I'm totally willing to be summoned in as a Sunbro or just a White Phantom, I, I rarely take advantage of the system for myself in order to face a boss with actual uh, human companions. It feels just as cheap as using ads to make a boss dif more difficult. It's basically 
using ads to make a boss easier. That being said, if you have crap people you've summoned in, it doesn't actually make it easier at all, but at that point, I'm just using ads to change the boss fight, and I, again, I would much rather just have the intended experience rather than messing with the balance or adding in a bit of RNG based on who my partner is, which is not technically RNG, but it might as well be with how many people there are. I almost cleared through all of these, and then I can start actually uh, heading down and grabbing the little giants down there. I do want to tag the bonfire first, just in case something bad happens to me, which is entirely possible. This is Black Gulch. I mean, you're you're never safe here. These guys are popping up all the time. Even if you think you've cleared through all of them, you may well have missed one, and that can just sneak up and bite you in the butt. That should be... No, I was going to say that should be all of them, and this was a perfect illustration of what I was saying. It's never all of them fully cleared the area and now I can just grab the last little bits. I am gonna equip the short bow for this because I've got quite a number of poison arrows and those will do me rather nicely here. Because I, the, it's an actual poison arrow it has no scaling on my poison so it doesn't matter that the bow is largely unupgraded, in fact entirely so, the poison buildup is going to be the same either way. On most characters I don't really intend to use bows much and so I would just use the poison throwing knives and sort of aim them manually but this character is actually going to be using bows somewhat so it doesn't feel out of place. You could even kite back which is really nice. The only difficult part is once you've lost sight of them, they will they can be a little bit hard to lock onto again, but it's not gonna be an issue since both of them are sitting right there and since I'm using a bow instead of throwing knives, I can actually aim it properly. It is kind of funny the little shadow effect that you get from the using the bow in darkness like this. <laughs> his friend won't let him leave he's like no you go back in there and you fight him there we go that actually should be his full health bar normally the poison throwing knives aren't enough damage to kill them with a sink oh come on no body blocks there we go and I can actually take out the other one without the cheese anymore. The only big issue is facing two giants at once, or three at once if you have a summon. Their hitboxes are silly, but so long as you're staying in the right places, you can avoid all that silliness. And just kill them that way. No, nope, don't want to go there just yet. I've got a petrified dragon bone over here with my name on it. Is there anything else in this chest? I don't recall. Yeah, the Ring of Giants plus one, which is a pretty nice drop. If you're going to be doing any sort of PvP, uh, poise can be really, really useful, depending upon your build. You can actually stack quite a lot of poise now, and since it was buffed, anyone who's not using the Stone Ring is actually going to have a pretty fairly hard time staggering you. I'm looking forward to possibly bringing in the Stone Ring for Faram when I actually take some time to or rather if I actually decide to take some time with him and do some of the arena I still haven't f completely decided and while I think that it would be a great way to play with him some more I don't want it to take away from my other series especially because it's going to take a little bit for me to figure out how to properly edit PvP like that yep Dark is still nascent I can actually just homeward bone from here since all that's left for me is a straight shoot to the boss. I should be coming in just in time, so that's nothing to really worry about. 
it's just a matter of heading right on through, killing the rotten, entering Sholva, and then getting the fuck out of Dodge. Preferably back to Maj mm -hmm. Preferably back to Majula in order to uh whatchamacallit? Spend all these souls I'm gonna get here. But it's probably not that big of a deal and I might just save that for next episode. Pairing the rotten is a bad idea, just because it's so easy to dodge around him either way. I haven't he's also one of the bosses that I haven't checked to see if you can parry, but even if you can, I probably wouldn't. He's very easy to avoid, and this is probably just going to be a great time for me to talk about his lore. If you look around the cavern, you can see all sorts of the little statues that are a part of the gutter, a part of Black Gulch down here, and really just a mark of Pharos himself. Um... Well, I didn't enter... Ooh, I took that hit on the chin, and I did not want to do that. Well, I didn't enter the Covenant. The Rat Covenant, actually, their symbol, as most Covenants have a rather meaningful symbol, is actually one of those Pharaoh statues and a rat embracing. It's a very cool little side bit of information that very few people actually pick up on. I've seen uh, several people, not several people, but I know for a fact that there is at least one artist who creates uh, laser etchings on glassware that have Dark Souls ref that are Dark Souls references, and he did a run of ones that were Covenant related and had all the Covenant signs on them, and for the Rat Covenant, it just looks like he picked out the very bold lines and really wasn't paying attention to what they were creating. He, he kind of focused on the actual strange symbol itself rather than looking at the negative space and seeing that it's actually the outline of a rat and one of those Faro statues embracing, coming together. And given what we know of Faros from the Rat King and his dialogues, She's talking about him as a very honorable man, the one human who could set up those contraptions and was actually a friend to the rats, basically. It's very clear that uh, Pharos was a very important character to the rats and the joining of the statue and the rat is basically the consummation of that. It's it really shows how integral he was to the society that they've kind of set up for themselves, which we actually get to see very little of. We only get to know that they're, they have a rat king who talks in a very flowery manner. I often ignore Sin for now just because it doesn't do anything for me. But there we have it. I'll talk more on Pharos when we get to the doors of Pharos, but that's going to be at the very end of the early midish game before I head on to Dranglet Castle, so I will spend all my souls back in Majula next time, and thank you all for watching!